You've all been asking for a putting drill. This is a great one. Now, watch these videos. Are you sick and tired of being this person? Missing short putts, hitting them long on long putts, and just three putting in general? I was asking one of my clients the day, and he said, yeah, you know what? I think nearly half of my shots are taken on the putting green. Think about that. This is probably one of the most important clubs in your bag. Let's make sure you get it right. Follow these three drills because these three drills will make a difference to your game because I know this because they made a massive difference to my game and understanding how to hold more putts. So these are three key skills we all need. I'm gonna start off with point number one. What makes up us actually holding a putt? Well, there's three things. Being able to read a putt, okay? Being able to start the ball online, and also being able to match our pace and our line. Now I want to start with this, and this is going to mind boggle you because it mind boggled me, but it's so important, okay? Effective hole size and matching our pace and line, okay? So we're going to start with right now. So if you want to hold more putts, you've got to understand this. If I get the perfect pace, where you can see a video now, of the balls just dropping into the hole, you have got three times more of a chance of holding the putt because all three of those gold balls can drop in. If you are somebody that's a little bit more Ricky Fowler-esque and a little bit faster with that pace, you reduce that effective hole size because you have to get the ball in the middle. Okay, so you can really see the differences of that when I'm rolling those balls towards a hole a little bit faster, got to be more perfect in the middle, a little bit slower, they can drop in on top edge, bottom edge and in the front door. What better place to be? Okay, so I want you to grab three golf balls and do this on your putting green and put towards a hole. I want you to understand that the faster I hit the putt, the more straighter my start line has to become, but then my risk of hitting it far past also gets bigger. The slower I go, the more I die it in. So let's imagine we've got three options. We've got super fast, we've got one in the middle, and we've got a really slow dyer that you've got to really account for a lot of break. So let's start off by hitting that putt, which is a bit more of that faster wrap one. Now, the faster we hit it, the more straighter and more towards target our start line has to become. So I'm going to start this one just outside the right edge, okay? It's going to go quite firm. Ooh, a little bit too firm. Okay, now I'm gonna take the far one. I'm gonna go to the opposite end. So if I had really straight, I'm gonna go to the opposite end of really trying to die this one in. So aiming a little bit further right and really trying to die this one in. Just like that one. Okay, now I'm gonna go into that middle ground. So that pace where it's splitting that really fast one and that far away one. Okay, so I've hit three putts there and I want you to do that same process. Let's find out which one you prefer. Now, I've told you which one helps you hold more putts. That's the one that just dies in there. But sometimes, I, I've, I've done this with golfers before, and they sometimes feel that they are more towards that middle ball than they are the far one on their sort of feeling of how they hold a putt. Now for me personally, I'm a golfer that likes to be on that side of just dying it in. Hence why I held that second putt. So the first part of this is understanding effective hole size and getting the ball just to die into the hole gives you the best chance of holding the putt. Let's move on to point number two and drill number two to help you hold more putts. Let's talk about point number two. And this might sound like a big word, but it's retinal after effect. And what it basically means is, you know, never, never want to say do this, but you know when you look at a light and you get yourself caught looking at a light and you look away, you can sort of see the glow or, or, or the shadow afterwards for a brief second, right? I want you to think about this when you're putting. I want you to look at the ball and do this on the desk now. If you've got a ball or something near you and you're watching this video, place the ball down, get very focused on that ball and then pull it away. And you can really see a little bit of a glow that stays there. Try it two or three times. It might take a little bit of practice just for you to get it. Now, you might be thinking, Alex, what on earth has that got to do with me putting? Well, the simple fact that I'm saying this and I'm laughing because I do it. 
when you're putting, right, I bet you one of these, your eyes are following where that putter head's gone, not actually concentrating on what you're hitting. I know I'm guilty. I'm guilty of actually watching the putter head to the extent of, oh, oh, it's gone a bit inside there, correct it. No, okay. I want you to focus on that golf ball intensely. That is your only focus, and that is what I want you to get that glow after that ball's gone, okay? So hit two balls away from me, just looking at that ball, not allowing yourself to be distracted by the putter. That was a really nice putt, don't know how that didn't drop. Okay, here we go again. Don't be distracted by the putter. Oh, past the front door. So that's point number two. And that is gonna take some practice. That is a great way of getting non-technical, but actually getting a nice free-flowing hit to the stroke. Don't decel, accelerate through. It's a simple way of fixing it. Let's now move on to the final point, and this is a corker. And by the way, if you're wondering what corker means, it means great. So apologies to anybody in the US. So the final drill, we're going to move on to a little bit of a left to right putt now. And that's a great little point as well. I would always encourage you to try different putts because it's what happens on the golf course, right? Left to right, right to left, and also for a right-handed golfer, a left to right putter can be a killer. This is point number three. What is going on? I come from Manchester to get away from the rain and it's followed me. I say rain, it's just a little bit of drizzle, but nevertheless. Okay, for the final drill, we're going to need a marker. And on that note, Montrose Golf Links, fifth oldest golf course in the world. I'm gonna keep saying it, because it's cool. Um, and two tee pegs. So this is all about start line. The reason why I picked a left to right putt is because notoriously, us right-handers find these hard. Like that right to left put, you left-handers will find that hard. So there's a bit of a process here. Let's go and put this marker down by the hole where we think our start line has to trace a direct straight line from. So if I place this marker here, I think this put needs to be aimed about a cup and a half outside that left, okay? So I place that marker down there. And I'm going to address my ball. I'm going to leave my putter down there. And I'm going to place two tee pegs in the ground that will make a start line for me. Now I've started off a little bit wider. I can fit probably another half a golf ball either side. But as we get better, we can move these tee pegs in a little bit more. Now the objective of this drill is how many putts can I hold starting it through my start line. Now the great thing about this is it allows you to understand that you're controlling one of those aspects. Can I start the ball in line? We've already talked about pace and reading the putt, so we're working on each three of those elements I said we need to hold more putts. Now you might get this wrong first time, you might need to readjust your marker by the hole, we might need to readjust where our start line is with these tee pegs, but that's all part of this trial and error of this drill and helping build those three skills. Okay, can I start it through, start quite wide, and then we can make it a little bit narrower as we get better at this. Oh. Oh. So as you can see, I would need to actually move my start line marker a little bit closer to the hole and then my start line a little bit more straighter if I was gonna hold that putt. But what I want you to do is, I want you to do three and then reassess where it is. Three, then reassess, because that's all about you tuning yourself into better pace, better line, and really starting to hold more putts. There we go, a nice simple explanation of how you're gonna hold more putts. Try each and every one of those simple three steps to get out on the golf course and not be that person we said at the start, whack, 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 Zorro around the hole. Thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe and also hit that thumbs up button too.